The Women in Management, Business and Public Service hosted its 18th annual conference focusing on the team shaping the future, strategizing to win. It's brought together women across all sectors in management, business, and public service. In her welcome address, the chairperson Wimby's Executive Council, Mrs. Olubumi Aboderi Talabi, said the conference was designed to inspire, empower, and advocate representation of women in leadership positions in both public and private sector. Over the last 18 years, we've implemented programs that seek to inspire, empower, and advocate for greater representation of women in leadership positions, both in the public and private sector. WIMBIS has a contributory associate pool of over 768 accomplished women and more than 9,700 women on its database. We regularly collaborate with credible local and multinational organizations to deliver programs which have reached more than 107,000 women. Our vision is to be the catalyst that elevates the status and influence of women and their contribution to nation building. Our mission is to inspire and empower women to attain leadership positions in business, management, and public service. The conference chairperson, Honorable Justice Rose Ukeje, OFR, Chief Judge, Federal High Court of Nigeria, between 2001 to 2008, charged the women to serve diligently in chosen professions and businesses. Yes, I cannot tell you how to strategize in modern terms as I'm still learning myself. However, I will give you a few strategies that have stood the test of time. That is to say, one, know your stuff. Dedicate time to hone skills, research, ask questions, and keep learning. For once you stop learning, you start dying. Focus on core competencies. Use more of what you have. Most people are successful in what they are passionate about. My daughter, Nina, who became, an, whom be, who became they say, an astute politician, used to be such a chatterbox, and now is said to be blessed with the gift of the gab. Who would have thought that any good would come out of our constant yapping that annoyed me no end? <laughs> Time is past when parents must choose professions for their offspring and insist on those professions. Let them follow their passion. Embrace innovation. Times are changing rapidly, I said. You can only produce different results if you change the way of doing things. Currently, it was a wise man who said, quote, it is only a foolish person that does the same thing repeatedly and expects a different result. For be adoptable, you can adopt, if, if you can't adopt, you can't succeed. Smart goals, set smart goals, mitigate distractions and avoid procrastination. Never live until tomorrow what you can accomplish today. Be brazen, be bold, take risks. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Do not be afraid of failure. It can be, it can be tough at the time, but the truth is negative experiences come with their own lessons. Mentorship, giving and receiving. We, have, we must have to pass the button. Play it forward. The landscape is awash with mentors. Choose one, find one. Her Excellency, Erelu Bisi Adela Efayemi, First Lady Ekiti State, gave the keynote address at the conference. We need to take legislative and policy framework seriously so that we can continue to break barriers. Women are the ones who fuel party machineries, right? Women are the ones who do all the cooking and cleaning and singing and dancing and everything. Hmm? But when it comes to allocating positions, that is when you remember that a woman is unqualified. That is when you remember that she's too snobbish, that she does not greet enough, she's too arrogant. And then people like me, because I've done it many times, I'm not ashamed to admit, I then have to go around our party leaders. 
uh, Josa, please consider these women. These women have worked hard for the party. Uh, please uh, consider us. That's how I was able to get four women into our State House of Assembly in 2011, and I got another four into the State House of Assembly in 2019, and one into the, na uh, into the National Assembly, as well as on boards and so on. Nilin and Ejo, please include our women. I don't like doing it, but until we have legal and policy frameworks in place, we'll continue to beg and we'll continue to appeal. And for those of you who might be, because we've also heard the argument that affirmative action is discriminatory. Hello? There should not be any woman anywhere or anyone who, is, uh, who suffers from discrimination and exclusion who should argue against affirmative action. Affirmative action levels the playing field. Affirmative action ensures that we get a foot through the door. It ensures that you end up, you, you, you are part of a race on equal terms. Many times women are starting the race from the beginning of the field, men are already midfield, and you expect that you're going to finish that race at the same time. It does not work that day. So we need these legislative and policy frameworks to ensure that come 2023, we see better figures with regards to women in decision making. Third, as women in leadership, we have to have an agenda. However it is your leadership position is defined, whether it's a position you hold on the basis of appointments, promotion, selection, election, if you're a woman in leadership, you need to have an agenda. And this agenda needs to be linked to a theory of change. So for example, the way I see it, my theory of change is that Nigeria is not going to achieve greatness if women are not empowered to be full and equal power, um, partners in development. It's going to be like the famous saying of uh, Chief MQ Abiola, clapping with one hand. So we might try that actually, uh, because this is a room full of women, so we all get it. When I'm talking to a room full of men, I ask them to clap with one hand, and they start looking at me very confused. And I said, but that is how we try to run our communities and our societies without em ensuring that women are empowered and are part of the process. Not all of us will be able to pass bills. Not all of us will be able to leave um, structures and, and so on in place. But everywhere we are, there is something we can do to ensure that we leave an identifiable legacy behind. ProShare Web TV speaks with RSA Ugu and Tara Fela Jurotoye on the essence of the event. I, I love to tell people this story. I've been attending women business since I was 23 years old. I'm 34 now. Um, so it's had a huge impact in my life. And I love the fact that WinBiz is not a person. It's an organization with structures and different levels. So it's sustainable. So to be able to pull something like this off for 18 years means that you have to be able to create some kind of structure. So I feel like it's an example to not just businesses, but other NGOs um, that operate in Nigeria or Africa in general. I think WinBiz is important because over time, um, it's helped to improve um, the representation of women in um, high-level positions. There's several women who are part of the WinBiz um, committee or the WinBiz um, founding members that have now become chairpersons of banks, first female chairpersons of banks and um, bigger institutions. And I think that that is a testament to the work that the organization has been doing. WinBiz is the platform. Uh, why I say the platform? Because it's the first platform that was created that is a catalyst to help women's voices be heard. Um, I think it's an environment where they're showcasing a lot of women, amazing women who are doing amazing things. I think just the sheer presence of these women and their stories will inspire younger women to see what is possible in Nigeria. Um, and I'm happy to see the progression, whether it's in women in business, whether it's people, women in, in the corporate world. Um, I'm happy to see that their voices are being heard and younger women have access now to see them on, on two days and then take what they, their learnings and go and change Nigeria. Mr. Asue Igodalo, chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, and Mr. Abimbola Ogumbajo, president of Council Nigerian Stock Exchange, also give their views on the 18th WinBiz conference. I think we need to have 
a lot more affirmative action in the direction of women. One of the things I've discovered is that, and I did it at the sub-level in the village, you know. I set up some sort of um, sub-scheme, micro-credit scheme, and I financed the women and I financed some men. The, all the women came back with the loans. All the women multiplied the loans. Most of the men didn't come back with the, with the monies I lent to them. So I think there should be some special provision to support women. Loans get to us. There are some banks that focus on women entrepreneurs, women business people, and I think we should have a bit more of that. Um, women are coming from a slightly disadvantaged position, and there needs to be a lot of catching up to do. You know, um, so uh, I'm, I'm for it. I support it. I know the CBN and some banks have put up certain programs in this regard, but I think a lot more needs to be done. What is being said here today is the first step, trying to bridge the gender gap. Once you bridge the gender gap, naturally you'll find that women will be included in all aspects of finance. This initiative will certainly draw more women into the workforce, and it's been proven it's been proven much by world statistics, but taken from World Economic Forum, that when women participate in business, they add more value to your GDP. In fact, one point, in fact it's been proven that in the Nigerian economy, we'll expand by 1.2% by, by more women that you have in the workforce. So I think that this initiative by WinBiz is good. It's going to encourage more women to have a seat at the table and it'll generally enhance our, our productivity. With the conclusion of the 18th annual WIMBIS conference, it is expected that the advocacy for women participation in governance, business, and other sectors in Nigeria will increase and be more strategic in the country.